Hey up Year 11, uh, this is another video blog to help you with your home learning. Uh, you have to do um, a sheet this week uh, where you have to fill in the various steps uh, which Hitler used to turn Germany from a democracy into a dictatorship. And this video blog will help you and give you the information that you need to be able to be successful in home learning. Um, you can pause this video at various times to look at some of the information that's on the presentation. So let's get started. Um, so we know that Hitler was appointed the Chancellor of Germany on the 30th of January 1933 by President Hindenburg, who you can see in the picture there. But when Hitler was actually appointed the Chancellor of Germany, um, he wasn't really that powerful. Um, yes, he was the Chancellor, he was the leader, but there were lots of things that restricted his power. And you can see some of those various factors there. For example, uh, in the German cabinet, only two of the, of the 12 in the German cabinet um, were actually Nazis. So lots of people uh, restricted Hitler's power. He wasn't the president, for example, so the president um, was more powerful than Hitler at that time. But we're going to find out how Hitler transformed Germany from a democracy into a dictatorship uh, by August 1934. And we look at those various steps in this video presentation. You can see that this visualizes the various steps and the crucial events um, that you need to look out for. In particular, things like the Reichstag fire, uh, the Enabling Act, the Night of the Long Knives, and of course, the death of President Hindenburg in August 1934. So let's find out how Hitler did this. When Hitler became the leader of Germany, um, many of the leading people within Germany, people like Franz von Papen, for example, thought that they could control Hitler um, and that they could be more powerful than Hitler. And although Hitler would think he was in the driving seat, as this cartoon shows, they would be the ones that are actually directing Germany. But they were very, very wrong about this indeed. One of the first events that really helped Hitler to become a dictator of Germany was the fact that in February 1933, the German parliament uh, was set on fire and, and was burnt down. Um, and this was blamed on a young Dutch communist called Marinus van der Lubbe, and uh, he was put on trial, he was executed, and Hitler basically used this event to portray the communists as extremely dangerous and a real threat to national security. And he persuaded President Hindenburg about how dangerous the communists were and persuaded him to pass this law for the protection of people and the state. The law for the protection of people and the state. And it allowed the Nazis to attack the communists, um, to round them up, to imprison them um, without trial, uh, and really helped him to gain control of the communists. So the Reichstag fire was really, really important indeed. And there you can see a picture um, of the Reichstag fire, um, very, very famous um, event. Uh, and there's a picture of Marinus uh, van der Lubbe there as well. So that's a really, really important event. And only um, a few days after the Reichstag fire, there was the 5th of March elections, and the Nazis managed to get 288 seats. Um, and this was really the last election of Nazi Germany. And although the Nazis did get 288 seats, it probably wasn't um, a particularly fair election because there was quite a lot of voter intimidation. The fact that the Communist Party got 81 seats, um, despite all the pressure that was being put on them, despite the violence of the brown shirts, the SA, um, really showed that there was a lot of support for the Communists still out there. So Hitler was very successful in this election, but he didn't have the two-thirds majority, the 66% of seats required to actually change the Weimar Constitution. Uh, and he needed to change the Weimar Constitution in order to set up a dictatorship. So what Hitler did is he managed, um, only a few weeks after the elections of March 1933, he managed to pass something called the Enabling Act. Um, now, you can read in more detail about how he actually did this, but essentially he excluded the communists from actually voting um, on this Enabling Act. Uh, and he also managed to persuade some of the other political parties, such as the Nationalists and the, and the Catholic Centre Party, to support this Enabling Act as well. And basically what the Enabling Act did is he gave Hitler the power to be a dictator. He gave him the right to make laws without having to seek the approval of the Reichstag. Um, Hitler passed this law, and really this was an absolutely crucial turning point uh, in enabling him to become a dictator in Germany. And in the few months afterwards, he was able to use the, the extra powers, these powers really of a dictator, uh, that he was given by the Enabling Act, really to stamp his authority on Germany. So, for example, um, he was able to use this to ban other political parties, get rid of the state parliaments, for example, uh, restrict people's rights. And there's just a reminder there about how um, Hitler actually was able to pass the enabling law, he managed to, to, to pass it by 444 votes to 94. 
So this shows you Hitler in the German Reichstag and shows a picture of them debating and discussing uh, the enabling law with Hitler obviously becoming very, very powerful indeed. Uh, and there's just a reminder that he was then able to use that enabling law to uh, make these various steps to set up dictatorship, closing down state parliament, getting rid of the trade unions and banning all of the political parties in Germany, including the communists um, who were obviously driven underground because of that change. So really, by July 1933, Hitler had massively increased his power in a very, very short space of time, um, only six months. And he set about creating all the hallmarks of Nazi Germany, which we're very, very familiar with. But there did remain some uh, groups that could have actually uh, restricted Hitler's power. And one of those was the Brown Shirts, his own SA. So in June 1934, a very important event happened called the Night of the Long Knives. Now, you can see here pictured... Um, Ernst Röhm, who was the leader of the SA, and he wasn't particularly happy with Hitler. He wanted the Nazis to do more to help the workers and, and the working classes, and he wanted a second revolution. And he represented a real challenge to Hitler, and because the SA soldiers uh, tended to be loyal to Ernst Röhm, Hitler was worried that, the, that Ernst Röhm would use the SA to um, launch almost this revolution against, against Hitler. So Hitler decided to strike first, and on the night of the Long Knives, um, he managed to gather together the SA leaders in a hotel in Bavaria, which is in southern Germany, which was kind of Hitler's power base. And basically, he managed to arrest and imprison and kill some of the leaders of the SA. And this basically brought the SA under um, Hitler's control. And in the years after 1934, the SA still existed, but it became a lot less powerful. Uh, the number of people in it reduced by 40 percent. And they were really taken over um, uh, by the SS and the SS, the black shirts, became um, the real organization of terror within Nazi Germany. So the Night of the Long Knives, an absolutely crucial event for Hitler gaining control over some of his own supporters, the SA. And then finally, the death of Hindenburg was a really, really important factor as well. Um, Hindenburg had remained president, but Hindenburg died in August 1934. Now, there are some conspiracy theorists that think Hitler maybe uh, killed Hindenburg or poisoned him in some way, but he was an old man, and a lot of the evidence points to the fact he died of natural causes. Hitler was able to merge then the office of Chancellor with President to become the Führer. He then got the army to take an oath of allegiance to him directly, and this made him all-powerful. He had the powers of a dictator, he had the support of the army, he had the support of his own people, and he was the undisputed leader of Germany, merging together the office of Chancellor and President, he now was the Führer. And so that's how um, Hitler became uh, the dictator of Germany, the Führer, and how in a very, very short space of time, in only about 19 months, he managed to turn Germany from a democracy to a dictatorship. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Good luck with your home learning. Uh, see you next time.